Greetings, loyal MFers. Thank you once again for joining me, your host, Roman Empire, as I commentate along for you for all the multiverse fantasy warfare action your hearts desire. It is yet another episode of what is for this week, perhaps the politically insensitive and uh, dramatically ironically named War Zone here in Belfast, Northern Ireland. But as we quickly move on from that potential landmine, we are presenting to you a stacked card yet again, as always, of multiversal combat action. We'll be kicking off with singles competition in the multimedia division. Our multimedia championship division has been quite active in the past few episodes, particularly after how things went down at the Flashpoint pay-per-view. Many potential contenders for that title have been popping up due to the way that match ended and due to the fact that the champion has had a, quite a bit of a struggle picking up any victories since winning the title. These two men, Cyborg and Beast Boy, wearing the world's finest tag team championships around their waist, accompanying the men who will compete in the ring tonight. Red Robin, Tim Drake, looking to pick up a victory for the Teen Titans. He has been on a roll and looking to pick up yet another win. This time, against the champ himself. That's right, going up against Spider-Man Miles Morales. Looking for a huge win to propel himself to the top of that list of contenders. Obviously, Miles Morales has not had the best luck. Took on Shazam, as well as Ant-Man in singles competition after winning the Fatal 4-Way they were both involved in, only to lose both matches. He's been called a fluke champion because of the way he won that title, and he's been trying to prove that wrong and has been unsuccessful in doing so. This is another opportunity to hopefully do that, but it's also an opportunity for Red Robin to push himself into that title picture. Obviously, the Teen Titans would love to all be wearing gold around their waist the next time they come out to the ring after a pay-per-view. This exchange now between this DC versus Marvel matchup, getting an idea of what the others are capable of through these chain wrestling combinations. Both slighter frames, both acrobatic, both very quick. Slight power advantage goes to the strength of Miles Morales. However, the training advantage likely goes to Tim Drake propelling Miles Morales with that arm drag monkey flip and obviously having the Teen Titans on the outside also changes the match a bit slight advantage in numbers ooh block into a right fist and now popping up into a sunset flip Looks like he's going in for the quick pin. Only a one count. Ooh, back elbow to the face. Ooh, went for a low, looked like a low crossbody style maneuver. Caught Drake, whatever it was, holding the gut there. Suddenly Morales fighting back into this. Shifting the match back in his favor. He's got to stay on the offense, though. Has grounding and acrobat like either of these men. Obviously, a great strategy. Slow them down. Maintain control of the pace. Keep them from utilizing the best parts of their offense. However... If you're also an aerialist, that means you're also taking time out of the skies. Moonsault attack here. In for the pin. One, two, only a two count.
Red Robin now waiting for Morales to get back to his feet. This could be the end. Round Robin! Into the pin. One, two, three. Stick a fork in him. He's done. Red Robin with a huge win over the multimedia champion, Spider Man. Gotta think Red Robin has just placed himself firmly in the title picture now. And Miles Morales once again fails to get the job done in one on one action, lending more credence to these claims that he is not a deserving champion, that that title was won in a fluke. Gotta think that's gonna be playing mind games with the champion, mentally messing with his ability, his confidence. And getting the job done it's going to be much more difficult moving forward red robin though big victory for tim drake and the team titans as we move on to tag team action we saw a six-man tag with many of the participants that are in this match in, in the end the legion of doom walked out victorious they look to repeat that process here tonight in tag team action as the team of Sinestro and Reverse Flash will be accompanied to the ring by the man they teamed with Gorilla Grodd, I guess man is a relative term the beast that they teamed with as they take on two of the three members they faced from the Justice League their nemeses, their rivals Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, and Barry Allen, The Flash. This trio, along with Bizarro and Lex Luthor, ever since forming the Legion of Doom on Warzone, have been a force to be reckoned with. Dangerous on their own, put them all together, and it is a hell of a faction to have to go up against. Justice League has fallen short. Superman has had trouble since the emergence of Bizarro. But they're fighting back each and every opportunity they get as we have tag team action here tonight and accompany them to the ring. Wonder Woman looking to stay in the corner and even the odds for Flash and Green Lantern. These two men hoping to get a win back on the duo who was part of the team that defeated them last week. Again, should say last episode of Warzone. Time works a little differently here in our pocket multiverse. Oh, oh, went for a Hurricane Rana and immediately got reversed into that alley -oop face buster. Flash and reverse Flash. Hal Jordan and Sinestro, these two pairings. So much experience with one another. Bordering on hatred for some. With that intimate knowledge of the other individual's strengths, weaknesses, skill sets. Ooh! Big face plant. That jumping complete shot. That backflip through that drop kick. A drop salt, if you will. As these two inverted figures of one another trade blows. Reverse Flash calling for an end here on Flash. Looks like it'll be a double team. Hip toss. And a kick. Both sides of the midsection. As Sinestro continues the assault. Now the legal man. That being said, it's not simply reverse Flash and Flash. You know each other so well, and Sinestro and Hal Jordan, those are obvious. But obviously, as members of the Justice League, or the Legion of Doom, on both sides of this matchup, they've faced off against multiple members of those opposing teams before. So all four of these individuals know each other incredibly well you're not going to surprise either of these teams much 
if you're facing them under these circumstances, but you can imagine they're going to do their best to try and do exactly that. That's the key to victory for a lot of situations like this. Oh, big T-bone-like suplex is to manage to surprise someone who knows you so well. Take advantage of that moment. Oh, big shoulder block into the stomach. And a running shoulder tackle in the corner. And thus far, have to say it seems like the Legion of Doom have had this one fairly in control. Dominating most of the offense. Propping up Jordan under the shoulders into a snake eyes. Oh, come on. Seen this before. Unfortunately, many of the factions taking advantage of the numbers game. And the way our rules here in MFW work are a little different. But hopefully, the referee will intervene after this. Triple powerbomb. Come on, ref. There it is. Getting Gorilla Grodd out of there. Sinestro went for the pin on Hal Jordan, but Gorilla Grodd has been ejected. Sense and reason has prevailed here. We'll still have a defined winner. It won't be by disqualification. But Gorilla Grodd has been ejected from ringside. Get him out of here. As the Justice League attempts to mount a comeback. Hal Jordan now. That deadlift gut wrench. Suplex. Flash still recovering on the outside, which leaves Hal Jordan vulnerable. He needs to get up on the apron. So far, ever since the ejection of Gorilla Grodd, Hal Jordan has stayed in control, tried to keep the offense on Sinestro, working him, keeping him grounded. Now making the tag. Oh, could see this finish here. Light speed combination. Into the pin, but reverse flash right in the corner as he wipes out Jordan while breaking up that pin. Flash taking exception there. But he has to focus on his opponent, Sinestro. Ooh, low chop block to the knee. And dragging Sinestro all the way to his own corner. Going for the pin, but doesn't have any backup from Jordan. Jordan wiped out on the outside. Nobody to intercede on behalf of the Justice League to stop Reverse Flash from breaking up that pin. Setting up, we could see a finish here from Flash. Setting up here. Near the gut. Speed Force clothesline folding Sinestro in half and into the pin. One. Only a two count broken up by reverse flash. As the German suplex from Green Lantern takes out reverse flash, but not before he broke up that pin. Oh, and a big rotating slam there. That Olympic slam style maneuver. Snake Eyes drapes Sinestro over the top rope. Backdrop. It went for another chop lock but avoided. And now Sinestro has the upper hand. Locking in that arm bar. Allen fighting out of it. Oh, looked like he went for another chop lock. was a bit off kilter. Didn't connect. Alley-oop from Sinestro. Flash trying to fight back here, though. Now Sinestro in 
his team's corner. Up on the shoulders. Seen this move before. Oh! Just stun gun over that top rope. A Sinestro leaping to the top turnbuckle here, just waiting for the opportunity to strike. Crossbody. Oh, just crumples. Got sidestep dodged by Flash. Sent crumpling into the floor. It looked like he went knees first. Knees landing into the floor, and then the rest of the body just folded. Looked like somebody slapping a carpet against the floor. I don't know why that visual came to mind, but that's the first thing I thought of. These two now fighting on the outside. Flash is looking to take advantage of that big miss. But now, both men running the risk of a count out. Head slammed into the barricade as we're at an eight count already. Oh! Elbow to the back of the head and we're at a nine. This could be it. It's a 10 count. Legion of Doom wins by count out. A win is a win. Sure, it's not the way they wanted things to go. But the Legion of Doom is not going to complain about a victory over these two. That elbow to the back of the head knocking out Flash long enough to ensure he wasn't going to get back in the ring by the 10 count. A very competitive match between these two teams, but in the end, comes down to a bit of cunning strategy on the part of Sinestro. Legion of Doom, your winners. Reverse Flash and Sinestro picking up a victory over the Justice League. And I'm sure that's not the end of this Legion of Doom Justice League fantasy warfare. Still more to come though. Singles action for a man who's been desperate to pick up some wins. Thanos. Thanos is one of the most dominant and confident forces on the roster, only to have his confidence completely shaken by a humiliating loss to Ant-Man in the debut episode of Warzone. Been reeling from it ever since. Ended up teaming with Loki in tag team action. The Avengers still winning because of a low blow from Loki to Thor. So in the record books with another loss after that. So he's been struggling to find his way as he now sets to take on the other man who was in that tag team matchup in one-on-one -on -one action to try and make that happen and redeem himself. A fellow member of the Avengers. The billionaire playboy Tony Stark aka Iron Man looking to topple the bearer of the Infinity Gauntlet Thanos in singles action we haven't seen him in singles action since Flashpoint Flashpoint was part of that fatal four way was the one who took the pin partly because of the strange frozen moment of Shazam. But he doesn't seem to be dwelling on that. He's kept his eyes on the prize moving forward, looking to pick up victories. And if he could pick up one over Thanos, that'll be a huge win for the man in the suit. Without further ado, let's ring that bell and kick this off. Ooh, went for a spinning European uppercut for a strong offense out of the gate, but it did not pay off as Thanos now aggressively taking advantage of the misstep of Stark. These two now fighting on the outside. Probably about the same height in the suit as Thanos. These two more even in terms of tail of the tape as one might believe. Ooh, now those stomps to the spine repeatedly.
Oh, tossed into the air, that pop-up. Just the raw power of Thanos to be able to just hoist. That's right, I said hoist. Iron Man up into the air. Going for a quick pin. Obviously not going to put away Iron Man, but trying to wear him down. Sweeping the legs out as Tony Stark looking to try and regain momentum. Those shots to the ribs. Ooh! Standing takeover. STO. From Thanos to Iron Man as he now crawls to the outside there. Only to eat another fist. And once again, these two on the outside. Palm that fist into a headbutt. Quite a counter from Stark there. Oh, the slap you just heard echo across the chest. Counter for counter, these two so far. A lot of back and forth. Oh, up he goes. Seen this maneuver before. Military press into a European uppercut. And now stalking for the victory, looking for that big dominator. Nails it! Plants Stark into the mat. That looks like it's it. Hey, ref. One, two, two and a half. You gotta think that could have been easily a three. Ref taking his sweet time getting into position for that pinfall. Could have very well cost Thanos the match just then. We've got to question the referee's lack of urgency in getting in for the pin on that one. Oh, forearm across the back and neck. Using that large frame to his advantage. Pressing the assault. Cooler heads prevailing, not getting in the face of the referee, not focusing on the slowness of that count. Just moving on to the next bit of offense and trying to stay on him, but the knees get up. Knees catching the ribs of Thanos on that attempted splash. And now up with a military press of his own. Power slam from Iron Man. Tony Stark now looking for a finish of his own. Can he land it? On the shoulders. Mark five. One, two, only a two count. Hit that mark five, but it's only a two. Thanos kicking out. Stark, no loss of confidence there. At least on the outward appearances. This is either man's match. All it will take is a big moment, a big mistake or a big key move being hit, and it could be over for either of these individuals. Thanos now cranking the neck. Ooh, Stark fighting out. Big right hands. Another spinning European uppercut misses. Gotta imagine Thanos was scouting Iron Man and Thor during those tag matches and while, while in the corner. Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, 2.9! That military press in that European uppercut almost took out Tony Stark. He's in worse shape than he might appear. Another finish! Dominator! This has to be it. Can't imagine there's much energy left in Stark. We're at the two. Oh no, only a two count. Somehow Stark managing to power out. As we were saying though, got to imagine Thanos was scouting Iron Man and Thor in the tag team match as well as the managerial role he had accompanying Loki to his singles match with Thor. Which is why they've been so Fluid encountering one another! You're a Nagi. Obviously the same true for Stark scouting Thanos. Starting to learn each other's styles and movesets so well. Uh 
up and at him. Such similar signature maneuvers, but this one gets avoided. Now trading fists. These two behemoths. That vice grip onto the shoulder in that trap area. Using the infinity gauntlet in hand to clamp down on the wrist to keep it steady. Apply that pressure. Oh, wait a minute. Up on the shoulders again. Could see a second mark. Five. Into the pin. One. Two. And there's your three. Iron Man with a huge victory over Thanos. And Thanos once again fails to pick up a victory. And you have to imagine the frustration is building for Thanos. Came out confident, strong in that first initial match, that episode. Looking to cement himself as one of the top contenders for the Multiversal Championship. Put himself in the title picture. Not only did he fail to do so, was humiliated in the process by losing to Ant-Man. Only to follow up on that without picking up victories in the weeks that would follow, the episodes that would follow. And now, Thanos losing to Iron Man with a decisive series of Mark Fives. Stark even able to kick out of the second Dominator. It'll be interesting to see where both these men end up moving forward. If that has propelled Stark in the ranks and what Thanos will do to try and bounce back but to round us off we complete our Legion of Doom matches in part one here as Bizarro has yet another challenge set before him another target chosen by the man Accompanying him to the ring, Lex Luthor. Another member of the Justice League. It will not be Superman, though. No, Superman's been given the night off. And has taken it. Says he's going to figure out a plan. On how to take down Bizarro. And thwart Lex's plans. But he needs a little bit of time to think about it. In the meantime, another member of the Justice League will attempt to do that on his own. Bizarro obviously has been on quite the roll. Victories over the likes of Superboy and Superman. Ever since Luther has started directing him, it's made him an even more unstoppable force. making his way to the ring. We haven't seen this man since his loss to Thor in that inaugural Warzone episode. Coming to the ring by his Queen Mira, Aquaman. Arthur Curry looking to fell Bizarro and the threat before Superman's plans have to come into effect. We'll see if the Justice League can do just that. Hasn't had the best luck tonight. And the Legion of Doom looking to continue their victorious ways. The bell has rung. And we ooh, start off with a kick to the gut from Bizarro. Straight into an attempted suplex. Only to need a clothesline for his troubles. Two powerhouses. Obviously going to be quite in high impact brutal match but that X factor for both sides Queen Mira and Lex Luthor in either corner respectively those two could very well be the defining factors of this match obviously we saw it when Loki interfered, assaulting Thor after his match with Aquaman, Mira was involved, gave an opening for Loki to take advantage of, ended up hitting that Loki driver, 
because of it. Oh, and a deadlift powerbomb from Aquaman to Bizarro. And of course, in the case of Luther, Luther has been very instrumental in propelling Bizarro to continuous victories. Even with just his intelligence and his strategy. Going in for a crucifix here. Powerbomb, and now there's a chair in the ring. Luther just sauntering back to his corner. He's brought a chair into the ring. Given that it's Bizarro, though, you gotta worry. Bizarro may not have the mindset to think about disqualifications. Could end up just using it. Then again, he's also a bit dense. May just not even notice it's there. Or may just sit on it. Luther distracting Aquaman here. And now... A pump handle toss! Clear across the ring. Referee getting rid of that chair. Into the pin. Only a one count. Just as we said, that bizarro logic had that pump handle set up, had a chair right in front of him, and instead tossed Aquaman in the completely opposite direction. Half Fisherman suplex already hit. Uh, ref, uh, I think I think Luther paid off the ref. This is well more than a three count. Aquaman just hit his finisher in the middle of the ring, half fisherman suplex, into the pin. And the first thing the ref thought to do was turn around and run the other way and keep looking that way. I'm suspicious. I have to think Luther had some hand in that. Would not be surprised if he bought the referee off. Highly questionable tactics from our referee staff. We'll have to have somebody talk to them in the back after this one. But I find this highly suspicious and unscrupulous. I have to think if that was called down the middle and a pin was made, that would have been it. Using the ropes here. Can't blame him for bending the rules after that display from the ref. Or lack thereof. Ooh, went for a spear only to catch a, a palm strike. Spinebuster! Bizarro ready to go on a rampage, but still reeling. Obviously, Mirak not pleased on the outside. He had the match won well over a three count. Maybe five or six seconds flat on his back was Bizarro after that half fisherman suplex. Only for the ref to just, I guess, treadmill it, we'll call it. Do the running man. Ooh, another big clothesline. All that full body weight put into that clothesline. Michael Man rolling to the outside there. Ooh, big right hand from Bizarro. Sends Aquaman to the floor. As the count begins. Brawling on the outside. Bizarro now seems to be firmly in control. Luther pleased on the outside, urging Bizarro to continue this merciless beatdown. Mira watching closely on the outside. Oh, and a clothesline. Bizarro now taking the reins of the match has Aquaman in the corner taking him up to the top turnbuckle kicking Bizarro getting free of that situation into the pin one two only a two count nearly turned that match around completely off that move Bealed! Tossed with such ease. Bizarro now. With the relentless strikes. Both men trading lefts and rights. 
counter for counter, elbows, kicks, punches. But Bizarro now a barrage of strikes into a snake eyes and he's busted open Aquaman on that top turnbuckle. Butterfly suplex into the pin. Oh, but now Mira getting involved. Turnabout is fair play. Bizarro had the pin, Mira distracting the referee. And Aquaman uses the opportunity to turn things around, hit that big clothesline, and take control. Ooh, went for like a scoop slam maybe. Maybe another one of those scoop slam sit-out pins, but it got reversed. And just like that, Bizarro changes the complexion of the match. If there's a man who knows very little about complexion, it is the very gray-looking Bizarro. Kick to the spine. Both competitors, managers have come into play in a big way during this match. Another pin made. One, two, two count. Not enough to put him away. Bizarro looking like he's wondering, what do I have to do to end this already? Granted, his inner thoughts are probably far more convoluted and difficult to understand. But that's a rough translation. Ooh, shots to the ribs in the back of the head. Oh, he's got him by the throat. Military press into a... Oh, spine buster straight into the mat. Driven. This Bizarro now... Setting up for a power bomb. Oh, but his back gives out. The back of Bizarro completely giving out. Aquaman takes advantage. Shoulder block levels Bizarro up to the top rope. Oh, the knees up. Went for a huge splash. Bizarro getting the knees up at the last moments. Trying once again with the power bomb. This time he gets him. One, two. Only a two, but turns it into a Boston Crab. Applying the pressure to the back, trying to get him to tap out. Aquaman breaks free. The damage may be done. Bizarro looks like he knows it. Both men have been in this match for so long. Pump handle slam into the pin. High impact move out of nowhere. One, two... Three, and that is it. Bizarro with a big win. This was an intensely competitive matchup on both sides. Both men giving it their all. In the end, though, Bizarro picks up yet another victory. You gotta wonder who, if anyone, will be able to stop Bizarro. We'll have to tune into future editions of Warzone to find that out. In the meantime, though, Part 2 of Warzone comes up. More matches to come. Thank you, everybody, once again for joining me. I am Roman Empire, host, commentator, MC, and all-around big mouth. If you're having a bad week, you're having a bad day, and this is one of those things you watch just to liven things up, give yourself a smile, make you laugh a little bit, or just escape, I'm proud to be the person who provides you with that. Remember to like comment let us know what you think about these things subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing and i hope you have a good day i'll see you guys again soon